Hey there, I'm Daisy Whitney reporting for Beat TV at the Nappy LA TV Fest, and I'm here with Chris Williams, who heads up Take 180. Take 180 is kind of a relatively new site, a site that I like a lot, has some very funny videos. So I'm going to let you explain what that's all about for our viewers. Um, so essentially, it's a website where we have original web series where we invite the audiences to sort of collaborate on the creation of these professionally produced web series, um, mostly by asking them to submit their own types of content. Could be story, could be video, could be photos, artwork, where the winning ones are then incorporated into the actual web series. Um, and it's working really well. We launched on March 31st. Uh, we're probably getting about, you know, a million and a half to two million people viewing our content on a, on a monthly basis at this point and growing that audience. Uh, three shows currently on the site. We've got My Date, where it incorporates uh, dating stories from the audience. We have I Heart Vampires, where if you're a Twilight fan, but you want to see it from the obsessed fan perspective, or um, Electric Spoofaloo, if you love to spoof entertainment. We've got a great uh, great show for that, too. Now, do you have advertisers for any of these projects? We do. Currently, um, on the site, we have uh, Walt Disney Pictures uh, advertising their movie, uh, G-Force, which comes out on July 24th, and it's incorporated into our spoof show in a very cool, kind of clever way. Um, and no, wait, can I give the spoiler for that? Because I yeah, watched that sure. trailer. So Absolutely. that's basically where it is, you're spoofing New Moon, which is we the do. second movie in the Twilight series, and instead of Jacob turning into a werewolf, he turns into a? Guinea pig, and then kind of with the taglines of not all guinea pigs are ready for G-Force. <laughs> and uh, um, it's, it's working really well. We're getting a tremendous amount of response on, those, uh, on that video, as we expected. Now, you're owned by Disney, though, so does that count as an advertiser? Yeah, of course it does. I have to compete with uh, other... I don't, I don't uh, work for the film studio. I am a separate division, and uh, we have to compete for those ad dollars like everybody else. And uh, um, it is synergistic, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's an ad revenue deal. Explain how the, the Disney ownership works and how involved or not Disney is. Sure. Um, we are a full-blown division of Disney. Uh, uh, what that means is we have oversight from, you know, legal and finance and human resources and all those things. However, not unlike a Miramax or an ESPN even, we do have a, a, a lot of independence. We are, we're creatively independent, um, you know, meaning we make our own creative decisions. Um, and uh, certainly we're out there competing like everybody else. And, and uh, um, you know, we benefit a lot from being the Walt Disney Company. It certainly gives us... Uh, muscle, if you will. It gives us promotional muscle, distribution muscle, um, all those things I think that are necessary with original online video in particular. Um, um, but at the same time, we have that creative independence, which really makes it uh, um, a perfect, uh, hopefully a perfect storm to create something super successful. Now, you obviously have some wiggle room having corporate ownership, but your cost structure it can't be inexpensive because you're producing original content and you can't shoot it all at once because you have to wait for the audience involvement. So what is your time frame for turning this into a profitable business? That's a great question. I'll start with the USA Today, the biggest newspaper uh, basically in America. It took 13 years to become profitable. Um, but uh, you know, I think media businesses traditionally need runways. I don't think the internet is any different. I, uh, um, and, and my corporate parents might argue with me here. This is, uh, of course, a, a debatable issue. But I would say if you're not giving a media business three years to take off, then you're really not giving it, doing it justice and not giving it the opportunity. And you really can't compromise audience growth for revenue early on, or you really, you know, it's a, I have a more of a Silicon Valley state of mind on this. I, I had worked at Yahoo for a very long time and seen the growth of that company as one of the, their earliest employees. And it's just you need that mentality of grow audience, focus on consumer, um, and, and then really look at monetizing. And I, 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 even in this environment, I, I believe that very strongly. Okay, so we've got about two years and nine months to check back with you on that three-year projection. Now, uh, very briefly, the final thing I want to touch on is fair use. You and I were chatting about that off-camera before we started talking. Now, uh, touch very briefly on that, because a lot of your content is of the parody nature, and you have to be very careful that you're not um, potentially setting yourself up for a lawsuit. What are kind of some of the tips or tricks of the trade? Sure. Well, first off, it's gray, as we know. There is no black and white with respect to uh, fair use. Uh, and also, keep in mind, as a Walt Disney Company entity, you know, I have oversight from very conservative and talented attorneys. So, um, uh, even in that context, with respect to parodies, you know, there's just there's a few things that you have to watch out for. You know, the the uh, are people going to be confused? That's the, the number one. Like, are they going to mistake our parody of Harry Potter for the actual Harry Potter? You know, 99.9999% of the time, that's never really a worry. Nobody's going to mistake our um, 
or Harry Potter with ADD for the real Harry Potter. Uh, and then um, you also really have to look out for the commercial tie-in. So G-Force, you know, was one that we looked at really closely because because we're promoting the movie G-Force, but utilizing IP essentially from from someone else uh, in a very parody nature. So it's important to say, okay, it's it can be ad supported in the way that it is, but you have to be just a little bit more careful about it. So you know, Saturday Night Live does a lot of parodies. It's ad supported. Nobody's arguing that, but the more close that you tie them together, the the more the more you might might be stepping over some some gray areas and with respect to fair use. But that's about it. I mean, we're we're very careful, obviously, as being the Walt Disney Company, and just from a business perspective, it's actually something that we 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 stay away from the the, the smaller and middle IP owners because the truth is, for the really big guys. Um, it's just not worth the time or effort, and it's also somewhat of a very supportive community in a lot of ways. And so, you know, I, I worry less about Fox and Paramount and and uh, you know Viacom and those guys versus kind of someone who might be opportunistic, let's say, for suing Walt Disney Company. Good advice. Thank you for joining us, Chris. I appreciate it. Excellent. My pleasure. Thank you, Daisy.